the most infamous age-old satanic ritual is known as the Black Mass, also known as Messe Noir, Mass of Heresy, Mass of the Dead, Mass of Death, Mass of the Nazarene, and the Devil's Mass. The Black Mass has developed and evolved over a period of 1200 years, and its origin is far from lying in an established satanic tradition, actually lies within the rituals and ceremonies of the early Christian Church. To many individuals, such a ritual appears to be pointless and unnecessary, however, the benefits are manifold, with some benefits being carnal, material, and spiritual for the practitioner. The Mass of the Dead is considered by some to be the originator of the Black Mass, and although considerably different from modern versions of the Black Mass, this variation of the early Christian Mass was performed by a Christian priest accompanied by a female server with whom he had copulated prior to the ritual. The Mass took place in a disused church and a black triangular host was duly consecrated and used. The progression from the Mass of the Dead into the modern Black Mass took a new turn when it was linked to the medieval witches' Sabbath. Accordingly, the inclusion of a horned figure who presided over the ceremony and who came to be associated with the scapegoat began to be one of the central aspects of the Black Mass. An orgy was also included, something that was most likely derived from the rites of the cults originating in ancient Rome and Greece. In his book, The Black Arts, Richard Cavendish outlines the proceedings of the witch's Sabbath commencing with the witches paying homage to the devil. The witches would light a fire while the devil was seated upon a throne in the form of either a goat, representing Satan himself, or a dog, which was closely connected to the dark goddess Hecate. The dog was one of her sacred animals. Hecate comes from the ancient Greek religion and mythology. The witches would approach the devil, and their approach would be foreign to a normal man. After this came the offering of the candles to the devil, and the obscene kiss, where the witches kiss the devil's behind. Following the obscene kiss, initiation, baptism, or marriage rituals would occur, followed by the feast and the orgy which concluded the witch's Sabbath. The inclusion of a feast and an orgy at the end of the witch's Sabbath is very much reminiscent of the Bacchanalia that existed during the times of the Roman Empire. The Bacchanalia was originally a secret society that eventually initiated men into its cult. Its members, who were said to indulge in their fleshly passions, were also alleged to have been responsible for a number of deaths performed in secret caves, and they were also thought to be responsible for defilements of its members who refused to take the oath of the cult or to commit specific vices. 
When the cult was finally repressed by the Roman authorities, there was estimated to be approximately 7,000 men and women who were imprisoned and their meeting places were destroyed. The Bacchanalia was then prohibited. The similarities between the Bacchanalia, the Witch's Sabbath, and the Black Mass are truly striking. The traditional Black Mass from medieval era frees the individual from constraints subconsciously and consciously from all of society's indoctrination and stigma. The ritual or ceremony as it is called by some usually consists of a priest who acts as the main celebrant, accompanied by two assistants, referred to as the deacon and the subdeacon, respectively, a nun adorned in a habit and wimple, a naked female or male if desired who serves as an altar, and the general congregation. The ritual begins with an invocation to the Prince of Darkness and his hosts of demons, followed by a renunciation of past allegiances and a dedication to Satan. The ritual progresses through the satanic offering, canon, and consecration of the host. The Mass is completed with the repudiation and denunciation whereby the power and divinity of Christ and other angelic deities are denied and the power of Satan is invoked and exalted. After this, the ceremony is concluded with the wafer which having been consecrated by the celebrant is then thrown to the floor and destroyed. The participants drink from the chalice, receive the satanic communion, and the ritual is then declared completed. The Order of the Nine Angles offered a similar, though different, tradition concerning the Black Mass. While in the Church of Satan's Black Mass, the naked female takes the altar, the Black Mass of the Order of Nine Angles uses a naked male as the altar three further participants and the congregation are included. As opposed to the accepted understanding of the Black Mass, where the participants are all adorned in black robes, the three leading participants wear white, scarlet, and purple, and while the Church of Satan excluded the sexual element that seems to have been prevalent in many of the previous versions of the Black Mass, the Order of the Nine Angles have included two specifically sexual elements, the first being the masturbation of the priest by the priestess, who then ejaculates over the host which is duly trampled upon by the congregation, followed by an orgy at the end of the ceremony. The importance of the Black Mass in modern Satanism, therefore, has a number of purposes, and even though groups such as the Society of Dark Lily regard its cathartic use as something of the past, it still remains one of the most potent and blasphemous rites of Satanism. In the early 1960s, Anton LaVey began to hold what he termed as midnight magic seminars on Friday evenings, lecturing on a wide variety of traditional occult and supernatural subjects with which he familiarized himself over the years. 
As such, these meetings began to develop and evolve into the black mass used by the Church of Satan. In the 19th century, the Black Mass became popularized in French literature in books such as Satanism and Witchcraft by Jules Michelet and La Basse by Joris Carl Huysmans. There is an excellent example of a Black Mass technique in George Orwell's 1984 wherein the magician O'Brien forces his victim or student Winston Smith to trample upon the sacred cow for his love of Julia, while Winston recognizes the force used on him. He nonetheless finds himself unable to recapture his original illusion of love for her. It is thought by most that all satanic rituals are in the form of the Black Mass. This is a misconception. Most satanic rituals have nothing in them that would be considered sacrilegious to other religions. One of the reasons a black mass would be performed in a satanic coven would be to remove a stigma attached to the activities of one or more of the members. If a person felt bound or stifled by a previous religion, a black mass would be performed to enable him or her to completely divorce themselves from the limiting factors of that past religion. A black mass consists of such things as saying the Lord's Prayer backwards, interspersed with obscenities, hanging the crucifix upside down, desecration of the host, and other forms of defilement or parody which are threatening concerning the religion. By reducing the awesomeness of the religion to ridiculousness, the Satanist removes fear and stigma. However, to perform a black mass just for its shock value would serve no useful purpose. Established religions are no threat to the Satanist. Atheistic Satanists use the word Satan as a convenient personification of their desire for unrestricted, uninhibited self-expression. The main philosophical and theological problem for these atheistic Satanists is that they have nothing beyond their own human powers to which to appeal for help when their personal resources provide inadequate. Theistic Satanism is diametrically opposed to atheistic Satanism. Theistic Satanism is centered on the belief that Satanas, Lucifer, Ahriman, the devil by whatever name, is a real entity with real objective existence. A few points about the theistic belief. Satanas is real. Demons are real. Satanas and his demons cannot be controlled, coerced, or commanded to do anything, nor abstain from doing anything they desire. The commanding language used by some Satanists is evidence of their lack of understanding and Satanic knowledge. These individuals are treading dangerously close to a very hard lesson to learn. We as devil worshippers, also known as satanic witches, 
are not morally bankrupt as established religion would have the world believe. We are theistic and spiritual individuals. To those religions, rock of ages fall on thee. We also believe the Gnosis comes from Satanas. He is the fountain of knowledge, wisdom, and the protector of the theistic Satanist. Many so-called Satanists simply could not stomach a real theistic Satanic black mass. When preparing, the more care you take to find the proper environment for your black mass, the more potent the working itself will be. This is not just because a more elaborate ritual chamber is exciting or evocative, but also because the very act of preparing for the ritual and anticipating the working contributes to the momentum of the working itself. The ritual chamber is not merely the room or open area in which you operate, but the overall concept extends to everything, including your physical body and all five physical senses of sight, hearing, smell, touch, and taste. At the very least, you should take steps to ensure no distractions and you should not expect to get everything exactly right the first time you complete the black mass. The goal is to exclude all sensations which clash with the focus of the working and to reinforce all sensations which enhance that focus. The black mass also generates its own forms of sinister energy. To see the black mass as simply a mockery is to misunderstand its power and magic. The black mass that we perform in Magnum Opus comes to us from our paternal coven in Bavaria called Di Dolce Ordnung. Our coven is much more than friends. Our coven holds the members together and allows us to fully realize our full potential as theistic Satanists. Entities such as Lucifer, Satanas, Beelzebub, and the hosts of Hell are actual beings from a parallel dimensional world where things are very different from our limited everyday reality. Rituals utilize the conscious mind and spectrum consciousness facilitates transversal of the parallax dimension. This is the speed of thought which is much, much faster than the speed of light, and this creates the resonant effect at the molecular level during communications with those just beyond the veil. For our coven magnum opus, rituals are focused on spending time communing with Satanas. We do not simply want to achieve physical advantages. It is our wish to get closer to Satanas himself. We regard this as a way of committing ourselves much more deeply to the Satanic path we have chosen. Rituals such as the Black Mass draw devil worshippers into closer communion and direct interaction with the devil himself. As we create the Satanic atmosphere, 
and as we ask for satanic blessings in our endeavor, we also bind and seal our magical workings using the phrase, so mote it be. This is the way to figuratively seal our desires and send them into the world of the parallax. Ave Satanus. As discussed, the Black Mass exists in several versions. The Black Mass discussed from this point onward is specific to Magnum Opus Satanic Coven. We begin our preparation by developing the objectives. As with any ritual, the objectives must be determined by the practitioner or coven. Once decided, the next step is determining the scope of the ritual. What satanic being will be called upon to facilitate achievement of the objectives? Will this be an invocation or evocation? This should be determined according to the Black Mass objectives. While the moon is on a synodic 111 month cycle, which equals nine and a quarter years, we do not wait 111 months to perform the Black Mass. The best time to perform the Black Mass is during a new moon. However, a full moon is also acceptable according to the ritual objectives. All roles and congregation may be male, female, non-binary, and or gender fluid. First, we have the celebrant. The celebrant role is served by a satanic priest, priestess, or a magus. The celebrant is the person who officiates and performs the ritual. Next is the altar. The altar is the person who will lie upon the altar platform during the ritual. Next are the deacon and subdeacon. These are the assistants to the celebrant. The role of the illuminator can be filled by the deacon, subdeacon, or both as desired. Another role is the mistress of the earth. She is dressed in a robe and, if desired, may be dressed in a nun's habit and wimple. The mistress rings the bell as required during the Black Mass ceremony. And lastly, the congregation chants, recites, and responds to recitations during the Black Mass. It is important to note all roles except the celebrant may be performed by any member of the coven. The celebrant must be a satanic priest, priestess, or magus in magnum opus. As we begin to prepare for the Black Mass, we want to ask a few questions. Will this be a sole practitioner or coven? Who will be the participants? Those individuals will have a role during the Black Mass, and they should clearly understand such roles. Adequate preparation is required for all involved. It is very important that the participants become the role which he, she, or they are fulfilling without reservation, encumbrances, fear, or doubt. Some celebrants, myself included, 
insist upon the celebrant, deacon, subdeacon, mistress of the earth, and person serving as the altar to meet for what is called a skull session. The skull session is where the group can rehearse during the days prior to the actual black mass. Since some of the roles contain sensitive gestures and conduct, the celebrant, deacon, subdeacon, mistress of the earth, and the altar should all verbally consent to the actions necessary to fulfill the roles. There should be no hesitation in this fulfillment. The celebrant will usually consecrate the implements to be used in the Black Mass immediately after the skull session. What is the sanctum environment? Indoors, outdoors, and Consider the ambient temperature. Will this be with traditional robes? What is the location and what privacy can be expected? You will also want to consider the location logistics. For instance, many times we have performed a black mass on an island since we are close to the water. Therefore, we would have to place everything we needed on our kayaks, paddle to the island, and get set up to be ready for the actual ritual. You will want to think about what implements will be needed for the Black Mass. A few include an athame or a sword, black altar cloth with chosen sigil, a bell, chalice, paten, which is a small platter, black candles, one white candle, candle holders and stands as desired, candle snuffers, turfer with turable, also known as a censer incense holder, musical instruments or device, a book holder or book stand, a font or a bowl, Crystals as desired, parchment paper, the ritual text such as a book or the written ritual, additional sigils, lanterns for ambient light source if needed, a chamber pot, etc. You will want to ensure that you have the text that you need, such as a script, and choose the chance to be used. You will want to make copies of these as needed. You will want to select appropriate music and select the sinister chant aesthetic for the Black Mass. The elixir should be chosen. Some elixirs must be prepared from ingredients such as our Diabolos Geis. The elixir is consumed by the celebrant at specific times during the Black Mass. The celebrant will also administer the elixir to the congregation during the Satanic Communion. Wafers should be placed on a small platter known as a paten, and these wafers are used by the celebrant when delivering the satanic communion to coven members. These wafers may be purchased or prepared using wheat flour and water. Gluten-free communion wafers can also be made with sweet rice and potato flour. Hygiene is a big part of preparation. It's very important. 
This is for respect and pleasure of everyone involved. The bath of purification or a shower can be used. Include the satanic grimoire to document the black mass and the results. Future study, review, and improvement will be facilitated by adequately documenting the black mass. You'll want to collect everything you need and ensure items are clean and functional. For instance, a bell without a clapper or candles without candle holders may have a negative impact on the black mass. The sanctum, also known as the temple, is prepared prior to the black mass. For example, lighting the candles, filling the chalice with the chosen elixir, lighting the incense, beginning the music, etc. Your black mass objectives should be written on parchment to be used during the black mass. When choosing sinister chant, something such as satanas is used as a means of gradually working into the emotional but still controlled frenzy. Some covens choose multicolored robes or other vestments for the celebrant, deacon, and subdeacon. Magnum Opus wears robes which are black in color with cowls pulled to cover the head of the congregation. The clergy may or may not cover their heads. That is up to them. Robes are worn by all except the woman or man who serves as the altar who is nude. The celebrant wears a stylized necklace bearing the inverted pentagram over the robe. Additional jewelry is permitted as long as it does not interfere with the performance of the ritual and does not cause any distractions. As with all ceremonial rituals, it is helpful if all participants know from memory the content and the spoken text. The ritual is then much more effective, enabling participants to be more relaxed and able to enter into the spirit of the ceremony. If not, the written text should be distributed to the congregation, and each member of the congregation may need a candle in order to read the text at the chosen times. Recitations should be in a language understood by the coven. Latin is sometimes used, however, all in attendance should clearly understand the Latin recitations. The black altar cloth should cover the altar platform. The athme, ritual book, bell, incense holder, candles, candle holders, stands as desired, candle snuffer, incense holder, musical instruments or device, book holder or stand, font or bowl, crystals as desired, parchment paper, sigils, etc. are placed on or around the altar platform. The chalice and paten are filled and placed on the altar platform as well, leaving room for the altar to lie down on the altar platform. Assemble the congregation in robes in the sanctum or in the preparation area at least 30 minutes before the beginning of the Black Mass. 
This should be a solemn assembly to begin meditation and quiet reflection to align the minds of the congregation. The visualization of the objectives and desired outcomes should be the cognitive focus of the congregation. The music chosen begins quietly as the congregation enters the sanctum, reciting the chosen sinister chant. The celebrant, deacon, subdeacon, and person serving as the altar enters the sanctum, reciting the chant. The person serving as the altar takes the place on the altar platform with their knees at its edge and widely parted. The arms are outstretched at right angles to the body and each hand holds a candle holder with a black candle. The celebrant stands between the altar's knees. The mistress then enters the sanctum, approaches the altar while ringing the bell nine times. She then turns to the congregation and raises her hands. The congregation becomes silent as the mistress makes the sign of the inverted pentagram over the congregation with her left hand, saying, I go down to the altars of hell. From dark dimensions I call thee forth. By the word of the prince of darkness I give praise to you. My prince, bringer of enlightenment, I greet you, Ave Satanas. The celebrant begins. To Satanas, the giver of life, energy, and consciousness, we are illuminated by your trans-dimensional light. The congregation responds, Our Father, which wert in heaven, hallowed be thy name, in heaven as it is on earth. Give us this day our ecstasy and deliver us to evil as well as temptation, for we are your kingdom for aeons and aeons. The celebrant then invokes the four cardinal directions of the compass with the sword, saying, May Satanas, the all-powerful king of the earth, grant us our desires. The congregation responds, King of the earth, hear us. Open wide the gates of hell and come forth from the abyss. Again, the congregation begins the sinister chant. The celebrant continues, We believe in one king, Satanas, who reigns over this earth and in one law which triumphs over all. We believe in one sanctum, our satanic sanctum, and in one word which triumphs over all, the word of ecstasy. And we believe in the law of the aeon, which is sacrifice for that desired, for which we shed no tears since we give praise to our King and the pleasures that are to come. The mistress kisses the celebrant, then turns to the congregation saying, May Satanas be with you. The deacon and subdeacon begin, Amen. Evil from us deliver, but temptation into not us lead, and us against trespass, who those forgive we as. Trespasses our us forgive, and bread daily our day this us give. Heaven in is it as earth on. Done 
be will thy, come kingdom thy, name thy be hallowed, heaven in art who, Father our. The celebrant continues, Before the almighty prince of darkness, and in the presence of all demons of the pit, and this assembled congregation, we acknowledge and confess our past errors. Renouncing all past allegiances, we proclaim Satanas, Lucifer, rules the earth, and we ratify and renew our promise to recognize and honor him in all things without reservation, desiring in return his assistance in the successful completion of our endeavors and the fulfillment of our desires. I call upon you, our satanic clergy, to bear witness. Deacon and Subdeacon begin, Before the Almighty Prince of Darkness, and in the presence of all the demons of the pit, and this assembled coven, we acknowledge and confess our past errors. Renouncing all past allegiances, we proclaim Satanas, Lucifer, rules the earth, and we ratify and renew our promise to recognize and honor him in all things without reservation, desiring in return his manifold assistance in the successful completion of our endeavors and the fulfillment of our desires. We call upon you, our congregation, to receive this pledge in his name. The congregation responds, Hail Satanas! The celebrant begins, in Troibo ad altari satanas, corpus satanas. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Together this night, we ask thy unfailing assistance in this particular need. In the unity of unholy fellowship, we praise and honor first thee, Lucifer, Morning Star, and Beelzebub, Lord of Regeneration. Then Belial, Prince of the Earth, and Angel of Destruction. Leviathan, Beast of the Depths. Abaddon, angel of the bottomless pit, Samiel, seducer of Eve, and Asmodeus, demon of lust. We call upon the mighty names of Astaroth of the West, Nergal, son of Enlil and Ninlil, Behemoth, Belphegor, Adramlech, Zepar, and realm, and of all the nameless and formless ones, the innumerable hosts of hell and all satanic spirits, by whose assistance may we be strengthened in mind, body, and will. The celebrant then extends his hands, palm down, over the altar. The bell is sounded three times. Therefore, O mighty Lord of Illumination, we ask you to receive and accept this sacrifice which we offer on behalf of our assembled coven, upon whom you have set your sigillum diaboli, that you may make us prosper under thy protection, and may cause to go forth at our bidding thy legions for the fulfillment of our desires and the destruction of our enemies. The congregation responds, So mote it be, Ave Satanas. 
The subdeacon brings forth the chamber pot and presents it to the nun or the mistress as decided, who has come forth. She lifts her habit and urinates into the font. As she passes water, the deacon addresses the congregation. She makes the font resound with the tears of her mortification. The waters of her shame become a shower of blessing in the sanctum of Satanas. For that which has been withheld pours forth, and with it her piety. The great Baphomet shall sustain her, for she is a living fountain of water. As she finishes, the deacon continues. And the dark Lord shall wipe all tears from her eyes. For he said unto us, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give freely unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life. The subdeacon removes the font from the nun and holds it before the celebrant, who dips a wafer into the fluid. Then the celebrant turns left to each of the cardinal compass points, shakes the wafer twice at each point. The wafer is then thrown to the floor. The celebrant takes the athame, turns left to each of the cardinal compass points, and recites the following. After each recitation, the bell is sounded. In the name of Satanas, we bless thee. 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 The celebrant raises another wafer, placing it between the breasts of the altar and then touching it to the vaginal area. The bell is sounded three times. The celebrant replaces the wafer on the paten, which rests on the altar platform. Taking the chalice into his hands, he bends low over it and whispers the following, To us, thy faithful children, O infernal Lord, who trusts in your boundless power and might, grant that we may be numbered among thy chosen. It is through you that all gifts come to us, Illumination, knowledge, power, and wealth are yours to bestow. Renouncing the spiritual paradise of the weak and lowly, we place our trust in thee, the Lord of the flesh, looking to the satisfaction of all our desires and petitioning of all fulfillments in this realm. We employ the duty of Mastima and call upon Mare and Rabdos to silence their breath. Ave Lucifuge, Rofocal, Ave Malfus, Ave Satanas. Deacon and subdeacon respond, So mote it be, Hail Satanas. The celebrant begins, Prompted by the precepts of the earth and the inclinations of the flesh, we make bold to say, Our Father which art in hell, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom is come, thy will is done, on earth as it is in hell. We take this night our rightful due and trespass not on the path of pain. Lead us into temptation, and deliver us from false piety. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Nema. The deacon and subdeacon answer, 
so mote it be, Nema. The celebrant begins, Deliver us, O mighty Satanas, from the past error and delusion that, having set our feet upon the path of darkness and vowed ourselves to thy service, we may not weaken in our resolve, but with thy assistance grow in wisdom and strength. The deacon and subdeacon answer, So mote it be, Nema. The celebrant takes another wafer into his hands, extends it before him, and turns to face the assembled congregation, saying, Thou whom, in my capacity as celebrant, I force, whether thy will or will not, to descend into this host, to incarnate thyself to this artisan of hoaxes, bandit of homage, robber of affection, here, since the day when thou didst issue from the bowels of a false virgin, Thou hast failed all thy engagements and broken all thy promises. Centuries have wept awaiting thee, fugitive and mute God. Thou wast to redeem man and thou hast not. Thou wast to appear in thy glory and, and thou steepest. Go, lie. Say to the wretched who appeals to thee, Hope, be patient, suffer. The hospital of souls will receive thee. Heaven opens to thee, impostor. Thou knowest well that the angels, disgusted at thy inertness, abandon thee. Thou wast to be the interpreter of our pliance, the chamberlain of our tears. Thou wast to convey them to the cosmos, and thou hast not done so, for this intercession would disturb thy eternal sleep of happy satiety. Thy wrath upon him, O Satanas, and rend him that he may know the extent of thy anger. Call forth thy legions, that they may witness what we do in thy name. Send forth thy messengers to proclaim this deed and smite him anew, O Lord of light, that his angels, cherubim and seraphim, will cower and tremble with fear, prostrating themselves before thee in respect of thy power. Send crashing down the gates of heaven, that the murderers of our ancestors may be avenged. The celebrant touches the vaginal area of the altar, holds the wafer aloft, and then throws it to the floor where it is trampled by himself, deacon and subdeacon, while the bell rings continually. The celebrant takes the chalice into his hands, faces the altar, and drinks. The celebrant then presents the cup to the altar, who rises to a sitting position and drinks. She reclines after drinking. Then the celebrant presents the cup to each of the members of the assemblage, first to the deacon and subdeacon and mistress, followed by others in the order of rank or seniority in the coven. In administering the cup to each, the celebrant recites, In nomine magne de nostri satanas, hell satanas. He then bows before the altar and turns to give the blessing of Satanas to the congregation, extending his left hand in the cornu, the sign of the horns. It is made by raising the index finger and little finger while turning down the middle fingers and thumb. 
all assembled face the altar and raise arms in the cornu. The congregation recites, Ave Satanas, Hail Satanas. The celebrant begins, Let us depart, for it is done. The deacon and subdeacon begin, It is done, so mote it be, Hail Satanas. The celebrant, deacon, subdeacon, and mistress bow toward the altar, assist her or him to the standing position, turn and depart the chamber while ringing the bell nine times. The candles are snuffed and everyone leaves the chamber. This ends the Black Mass. The Black Mass itself is very therapeutic and a deep connection to satanas for the coven or the individual practitioner. Preparation is key for any ritual and the Black Mass is no different. Over time, the coven will become more and more comfortable with the performance of this or any other ritual. Those objectives of each operation should be fulfilled, and lastly, the satanic grimoire should be updated with the results of the ritual or ceremony, and any notes needed for better preparation or improvement should be noted as well. After the ritual, some covens will partake in an orgy or other gathering, feast, or communion with themselves as part of their satanic family. The main objective of any ritual should be the connection, communication, and closeness gained with Satanas. So mote it be.